Southwest, Southwest Texas. Texas. Howdy, East Texas. <laughs> Great to be back in the Piney Woods here in Beaumont, Texas. Listen, I, I think you all have been informed about what happened earlier, why well, I'm a little bit tardy today. Uh, unfortunately, we were unable to take the flight that we were scheduled, and we had to drive by road. But it did not matter what the obstacle was. It didn't matter what the scheduled deviation was. Nothing was going to stop me from getting back to Jefferson County, Texas. So I, I want to thank uh, the sheriff for being with us. And so I got like a, a, a blazing sun in my eye, and there's hardly anybody I can see. And I, where, where is the sheriff right now? Right there. I'm obviously, the guy with the cowboy hat on. She, sheriff, and Ran, Randy was blocking you, doing the best he could to, to block you. Uh, but listen, Sheriff, thank you very much for being here, for being a part of this. But thank you so much more for what you do every day as a law enforcement official in our state, helping to keep our community safe. We all need to process and comprehend exactly the way law enforcement works because, you know, we all have jobs and we all have unexpected events that occur in our jobs and things like that. But we never know the day or the hour when something may happen that will alter what a law enforcement officer does. When Texans woke up yesterday, I would say exactly no one knew that later on in the day there would be a hostage situation in the small town of Colleyville that necessitated the response of law enforcement at, at every level, the local level, the state level, and the federal level. And thanks to the incredible team provided by the FBI, they were able to ensure every hostage got out alive and safe with no harm whatsoever. So thank you to our law enforcement officers for what they do to keep our community safe. I want to thank your Congressman Randy Weber. Randy, thank you for being here. Thank you for your service in the United States Congress. Thank you for fighting back against the Biden administration that is operating completely lawlessly. We need your efforts up there fighting back against the Biden administration. And, Speaker, thank you for being here. It's great to be in your neck of the woods again. But also, as I'm going to be talking about for the remainder of my speech, there is so much that we've been able to accomplish for the state of Texas that keeps Texas so incredibly successful. And with your leadership and the, the House's past session, you kept Texas on the right pathway. So thank you for your leadership. Well, listen, there, there is a primary reason why it was so urgent that I be here and have the chance to visit with you. Because we need to understand that the context that Jefferson County deals with, and that is, as it concerns elections, some of them are won by Republicans in Jefferson County. Some are won by Democrats. But we need to be abundantly clear what's going to happen in 2022. From the top of the ballot to the bottom of the ballot, in Jefferson County and in the state of Texas, it is will be Republicans who are going to be winning in 2022. And let me explain to you why I'm so confident that it's going to turn out that way. We're going to do what really needs to be done, and that is to contrast the difference between Republicans versus our Democrats. And candidly, the, the difference between the two has never been so stark. Remember this. We used to be Republicans versus Democrats, and then they were liberals, and then they were progressives, but now they tell you who they really are. They, you're exactly right, they are socialists trying to impose their radical socialist agenda on our country, and by God, we Texans, we're not going to allow these big government socialists to impose their radical agenda on the state of Texas. Let me give you a couple of issues of, of why we cannot accept the radical agenda in Texas. One is because of jobs in the economy. As maybe Speaker Phelan was talking about, when you look at what has occurred under Republican leadership in Texas, we've been able to formulate an economic juggernaut 
working with in partnership uh, with the local business leaders. Let me just give you a few examples. Every year that I've been governor, Texas has been ranked the number one best state in the United States for doing business. Every year that I've been governor, Texas has been ranked the number one state in America, finishing number one for the most new economic development projects. Those projects lead to more jobs. And know this, it's not just large businesses that get focused on. Because as we gather in Jefferson County today, Texas now ranks number one in the United States as the best state in America to start a small business. We appreciate the role that small businesses like this one we gather tonight, the role they play in our economy. And so what, what does all this mean to you all? Be because of all these records were set, one thing that it means is that Texas is climbing not just the national economic rankings, but also the international economic rankings. Before COVID, Texas, if it were its own country, we would have had the 10th largest economy in the entire world. That is no longer true today, because as of today, Texas now has the ninth largest economy in the entire world. So who do we pass up? We surpassed Brazil. And so Texas now has a larger economy than Brazil. We have a larger economy than our neighboring countries of Mexico and Canada. Texas has a larger economy than Australia. And Texas even has a larger economy than the country of Russia. So we are, we are continuing with our economic might. But let me drill down to exactly what it means to you here in Jefferson County, Texas. Because of all of these situations of job growth in the state, it means as we gather here in Jefferson County tonight, more Texans have a job than ever before in the history of our state. People have more money to put food on the table, to pay their rent, uh, to take care of their families than ever before in the history of our great state. But here's the key point. All of that remarkable job growth could be absolutely destroyed if Democrats ever take control, if their radical liberal agenda ever takes control. And let me just give you one easy example, an easy example that candidly applies very prolifically to the Beaumont, Port Arthur, Jefferson County area. And that is this radical leftist idea that they are trying to impose on the country and even some trying to impose it in Texas of the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal would crush all of the good paying jobs in the energy sector. Hundreds of thousands of jobs are in the energy sector in the Lone Star State, many in the region that we gather in tonight. And we are not going to allow these uh, radical leftists to destroy those energy jobs. Instead, one of the reasons why I am running for re-election is to ensure that we protect the high paying energy jobs in the great state of Texas. Listen, we, we see the radical agenda impacting more than just things like jobs in the economy. We also see it in the education arena. We see this leftist agenda surface where they're trying to impose their agenda in our schools. And one of the ways that we've seen it across the country and even in some schools here in Texas is through the use of critical race theory. Now, critical race theory is a way, it's a tool really, by the leftists to try to rewrite our history and at the same time redesign our future. And among other things, what they do is they, they pit people on the basis of the color of the skin on their race. And then they have the people of different races fight against each other. That is contrary to the fundamental principles of the United States of America and candidly contrary of the person we honor tomorrow and Martin Luther King Jr. Because it was Martin Luther King Jr. who reminded us all in America, frankly in the world, no one is to be judged by the color of their skin, but instead by the content of their character. That is what we stand for in Texas and in America. So to respond to this, and this is one of the things that the speaker worked on, to respond to this, uh, we passed a law in the regular session, and then we passed 
another law, and I just lost the microphone coming back on. We, we passed another law in the special session where altogether we banned uh, the teaching or use of critical race theory in every subject, in every grade, in every public school in the entire state of Texas. I am not aware of any other state in America that has a stronger ban on critical race theory than the great state of Texas. And I am running for re-election to ensure that we will never allow the teaching of critical race theory in our schools in Texas. But I want to make sure you know that I'm, I'm an incredibly strong backer of our public schools. Listen, I attended public schools my entire life. Also, I've been a strong supporter of public schools as governor. There's no governor who has provided more resources to public schools than I have. But we need to recognize, at the end of the day, there is no government program that can replace the role that parents play in educating our children. So I am running for re-election to bolster a parent's bill of rights to restore parents as the primary decision maker of their children's education and their health. Parents matter, and we will ensure that parents will be in the forefront of their children's future. Yeah. Returning to law enforcement for a second, another way in which we see this radical leftist agenda hijack our country and endanger our communities is through this idiotic policy of defunding police. You've seen what it's done in L.A. and San Francisco and Portland and Seattle and Minneapolis and New York and Chicago, and it has been reckless and has led to increased crime. Unfortunately, we even saw what it did in Texas. There's always one in Texas, and I can't remember who said it right over here, is Austin. Now everyone's saying it. Austin, Texas, defunded their police. And it will come as no surprise that as a result, this past year, Austin set an all-time record with the highest number of murders they've ever had. Defunding police always leads to lawlessness. In Texas, we don't defund police. We support our law enforcement officers in our state, period. So with, with the help of the Speaker and, and the members of the House and Senate, we pass a law that will defund any city that defunds our law enforcement. And now the city of Austin has had to refund their law enforcement by more than $140 million. But it, candidly, maybe our biggest safety issue is the issue of the outrageous open border policies by the Biden administration. Listen, listen the, the, the border had been solved under President Trump. It was just a, a year ago or so that we had pretty much the lowest border crossings that we had seen in decades. And President Trump, by the way, who has endorsed my campaign, President Trump had... President Trump had four simple policies that worked very effectively. One is the Remain in Mexico policy for people to remain in Mexico uh, while awaiting whether or not they are able to come into the United States for asylum purposes. Two is Title 42 that would require people to, or let's say prevent people from being able to cross the border because of health care reasons. Uh, number three is to end the crazy catch and release program that Biden has now reinstated. Uh, and uh, number four is President Trump, yes, he did step up and begin to build the border wall, making Texas more secure, making America more secure. Well, because of the Biden open border policies, there have been in the past year almost two people, two, I'm sorry, two million people who have crossed the border illegally. Drug cartels, human traffickers, drug smugglers uh, is extraordinarily dangerous. And as a result, Texas has stepped up and done more than any state has ever done in the history of our country for a state to step up and to secure our border. First thing we did, with the help of the legislature, 
we passed and funded three billion dollars from texas taxpayers to step up and secure the border i signed 15 laws over the special session and during the regular session that cracks down on the horrific crime of human trafficking we must not stop this fight until we eradicate uh, any human trafficking especially of the women and children who are being exploited as they are being brought across our border And I've deployed 10,000 National Guard as well as more than 1,000 Texas Department of Public Safety officers to secure our border, to crack down on this smuggling of the, one of the most deadly drugs, fentanyl, uh, that's coming across our border. And just law enforcement in Texas alone has seized enough fentanyl to kill every man, woman, and child in Texas, California, New York, Florida, and Illinois combined. It's deadly and it's dangerous. And we must stop it. And also the National Guard and Border Patrol, they are arresting and jailing people who are coming across the border, committing crimes in our state. We're sending a message. If you cross in the state of Texas, you're going to wind up in jail, not being caught and released. And now Texas is building its own border wall, making sure that we secure our state and secure the sovereignty of America. Listen, there, there's a lot of these issues and challenges that are on the ballot here in 2022. But we need to understand, as important as safety is, freedom itself is on the ballot in 2022. You know, when you think about your freedoms, you think about what, what is in our Constitution's Bill of Rights. As your governor, I have fought to secure and to protect your constitutional rights guaranteed by our United States Constitution. At the same time, we need to understand the truth of the matter is that people like Beto, they have worked to undermine. I know I got it wrong. It's Robert Francis O'Rourke. Has, he has undermined your constitutional rights. Get this. I know that we are in God's country right now. And I know that you, you worship God Almighty. And what Beto has threatened is to take away the tax-exempt status of any church that refuses to bow down to the woke radical agenda. That not only violates the Constitution, it is offensive to every man and woman and child in the Lone Star State. And as your governor, I will not allow it, period. <laughs> to the contrary, what I signed, I signed a law that will prohibit any public official at any level from ever closing down our churches, denying you the opportunity to go to church and worship God Almighty. And what comes after the First Amendment? The Second Amendment. And need I tell you what Beto has told you what he would do to your Second Amendment rights? Yeah, and are we going to let him come and take your guns? No way. No way. So while he threatens to come and take your guns, I have signed more than 20 laws to protect your Second Amendment rights, including making Texas a constitutional carry state. And including making Texas a Second Amendment sanctuary state, preventing Joe Biden coming in from and taking your guns. Freedom itself, freedom itself is on the ballot. And we need to understand, if we're going to defeat freedom, we've got to join together. And we've got to show up in force at the ballot box because there's too much at stake, too much at risk in this election, not to be engaged and not to be involved. But the main thing you need to understand is that as you gather at this incredible venue here tonight, as you go home to your neighborhoods, you are amongst similar-minded people who love our country and believe in your heart and know for a fact that the United States of America is 
the greatest country in the history of this entire world. And I know that there are some of you who may even think that you love Texas even more than you love the United States of America. But what you need to understand is there are people in our state and there are people who are running for office this election who hate America the way that it is, who want to redesign the future not only of America, but redesign the future of our great state. And we cannot let them destroy our state or our country. The way that we save our state and the way we protect the future of America is we band together and we start right now tonight in Jefferson County, working every single day all the way to next November, making sure that we beat Beto, we beat the Democrats, we keep Texas red, and we keep Texas the best state in the greatest country in the history of the world. God bless you all, and God bless the great state of Texas.